Cosmic Laws Oneness God is one. God is coherent. Through his perfect unity and coherence, God becomes comprehensible. The first truth we realize from God's oneness is that we are united unconditionally and eternally with spirit. Once we grasp this reality, a second truth emerges. Complete separation from God is utterly impossible. We begin our study with the law of oneness because God's oneness makes God coherent. Coherent has a twofold meaning here. God is coherent because all that God is is integrated as one. Nothing exists outside of Spirit's presence, and because of Spirit's unity, God becomes intelligible, that is, coherent to mankind, and to one degree or another, all other life forms created by Spirit. Let us examine two broad categories of man's quest in comprehending oneness. We are all aware of the tremendous discoveries in physics about how God's energy and matter are unified. Albert Einstein is credited as being a genius in large part for his achievement in mathematically describing the integrity of energy and matter on a large scale. With elegant simplicity, he described his theory of relativity by the now famous equation E equals mc squared. For the remainder of his beautiful life, Einstein continued his quest to combine small-scale energies and particles to larger ones in a unified set of equations, the unified field theory. He often felt a sense of awe during his pursuit, and he once wrote, The most incomprehensible thing in the universe is that it is comprehensible. Likewise, in the biological sciences, a deepening awareness of the interconnectedness of life has created new discoveries, and even whole new fields of science such as ecology. As a result, scientists of widely diverse interests have become interdisciplinary. For example, international conferences on the environment, AIDS, ecology, ozone, and the greenhouse effect have brought together scientists of many disciplines the world over to work on global problems which affect all planetary life. Truly, humanity is beginning to uncover the total interdependence of God's creation. If this is true in the study of God's physical universe, how much more so must it be true for us, spiritual scientists, if you will, in our metaphysical quest to understand God's oneness? Some of the greatest spiritual scientists have come from the Hasidic branch of Judaism. In the 18th century, the founder of Hasidism, Israel Baal Shem Tov, spoke of the unity of God and his commandments. As Rabbi Ari Kaplan relates in The Light Beyond, Adventures in Hasidic Thought, the Baal Shem Tov said in the name of the earlier masters that one should realize the mystery of God's unity. Whenever we grasp hold of any part of this unity, we grasp it all. The Torah and commandments emanate from God's essence, which is true unity. Therefore, when you observe even a single commandment correctly with love and attachment, you grasp part of the unity through this commandment. All of this unity is then in your hands. Since all the commandments are included in this unity, it is then as if you kept them all. Here, then, is one of the most important keys we will ever learn about God's oneness and magnificence. God's laws are integrated, not disintegrated. Therefore, the definition of any one of the divine laws must include all other universal principles. Take love, for example. By knowing that divine love includes all other divine laws, we better understand how to express love correctly. Divine love requires us to know our oneness with God and with one another, and to realize that every act of love causes a positive effect. Love also will cause transmutation or change to occur in our lives. Love requires us to give and take, to be orderly and to make sacrifice. True love brings our unique individuality into expression and safeguards our free will so that it will be in a balance and harmony with others. Love assures the continuance of our individual and collective spiritual growth and evolvement. Add the rest of God's law to this list and a clear vision emerges. Only through the manifestation of all spiritual principle can one law truly be brought to life. On October 26, 1971, Archangel Kamuel channeled additional information on the oneness of God's nature. It is only in divine mind that we can even subdivide the one, the whole, the all, which is God to begin with. So if we look at the mathematical formulas, we see that the one unified God, which is all that there is, is indivisible. Yet within that indivisibility there are aspects that can be conceived of by reasoning, intellectual, and even spiritual mind consciousness. When you pick up a solid form and see it as a whole, you still can see two sides of it. 
yet it is not divided in itself, it is whole. Such is the nature of God's energy, life force, light and creation. All of creation together is one, as part of the one, and undivided in its respect, for God sees no division in himself or in his creation. As we live and breathe, let these words be foremost in our thoughts and in our hearts. We experience divine oneness as God intends by seeing no division in ourselves, between ourselves and spirit, and between ourselves and every other living being. By these actions are we raised, mathematically speaking, to the power of one. The change that will occur in us and in humankind will be this, the irreversible decrystallization of the curse that makes us think that we can be separate from our Creator. Jesus addressed this very subject in a communication on October 18, 1960. We continue to think of ourselves as separate from the Christ within, as though we can have an existence away from, in spite of an addition to the Spirit that is within us equally. This is man's original sin and no other. There is no separation. There can be no separation. The hell and the torment and the sins that follow from this original sin are the sins created upon sin from thinking we are severed from God. God has created us, each of us, and God stands with us whether we stand with God or not. I am most serious upon this communication in relaying this most basic and profound thought. It is the essence of all my teachings for every incarnation I have ever lived upon the face of this globe, or on any other dimension or other planet that I have taken up as a sojourn. This is the essence of all religion, of all philosophy, of all being. Recognize that you are the creation of the Holy Spirit within, and depend upon the Holy Spirit to guide you, to teach you, and to bring you into the full glory of God's awareness or Christ's consciousness. Jesus' powerful example of being one with God, and of seeing no separation at all, is our guiding light. In that lifetime, he stilled storms, raised the dead, healed every kind of disease, manifested food for thousands of people, and performed many other miracles. He possessed fantastic powers, a tremendous ability to manipulate energy. But according to the Gospel of John, what did he say over and over again in various ways? I can do nothing of myself. I do not seek my will. Why? He and the Father, God, were one, not two, one. And in that oneness, Jesus knew that the Lord God, the laws of God, perform all actions. He alone and we alone can do nothing by ourselves. To know this is to comprehend oneness and to experience true humility. As we dwell on our oneness with God and all of God's creations, let us absorb one more example of Jesus' profound demonstration of being one with Spirit. But first review how many pressures, problems, and responsibilities we each have in our lives family, business, personal, spiritual, and so forth. Now think about the responsibilities Jesus had in his incarnation, to himself, to his disciples, to his family, to all the souls on earth at that time and for thousands of years hence, amounting to billions of human incarnations. This was his burden as the Christ exemplar for mankind. He said, Come to me, all you who labor and carry burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and meek in my heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is pleasant and my burden is light. Can it even be conceivable that his burden was and still is light? He knew full well the crushing weight of his responsibility to every life form on the planet in its spiritual way shower, and yet he said his burden was light. He must have been out of his mind. Yes, he was definitely out of his mind in what he was not speaking from mortal consciousness. Those were the words of one in I am consciousness, whose union with God is total. If this tremendous burden was light, what is this yoke that is pleasant? What is it that one should shoulder to make the heavy burden of life light? It could be none other than the laws of God. Jesus said that the greatest of these is love. What then is divine love? All of the laws of God manifesting through us in unison to perfection. Our Heavenly Father, Holy Wholeness is your name. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Elanu, Adonai Ichad. Hear, O Israel, all children of God, the Lord our God, the Lord is one.